Hello everyone, Vicki Ashardo with Nature's Best Art. Thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to be painting a vase of lilacs. My husband and I went on a walk and uh, I saw this beautiful lilac bush and I just have to paint it, right? <laughs> oh, they're so beautiful. So what I want to tell you, now if you've seen my videos before, you know that I um, always put my design on a piece of paper. It's just a 20, 20 pound piece of paper. And then what I do is I put a foam board and my 140-pound uh, Strathmore watercolor card on the foam board. And then I put my masking tape around it. And what I do is I put my drawing on in here and, you know, within the, within the masking tape. And then I tape it on the top. And I always put my arrow there because when you start putting this masking tape and turning it around and putting it... Uh, you may not remember what, especially on a card, it doesn't matter if it's a, just a watercolor paper, and you can do it on the watercolor paper too, but if it's on a card, you want to make sure that the, you know where the top is when you, you know, when you start putting that masking tape on. Okay, so now um, my drawing uh, is, you know, on the paper, and what I did is I put my Lowell Cornell transfer paper underneath so it would transfer through onto my watercolor card. Uh, now, uh, if you want to, you can uh, use this as a reference. You can pause the video and use that as a reference. And um, so, there it is. And now we are ready to paint. Uh, and what I want to show you in this is the lilacs um, are uh, going to go in here. And this, uh, this area just gives me, the, these uh, pencil marks just gives me an idea of where I want to put the lilacs. Okay, I didn't want to make each individual lilac because they're kind of small and tedious, so I wanted to wait, and I'll, I'll put them on there. Okay, so now the colors we're going to use today, and uh, I'm so excited about these colors. I think it's going to really be a beautiful picture. The vase, uh, I'm going to make an ultramarine blue, and uh, the background, it's going to be uh, a mix of ultramarine blue and Windsor Newton Cotman mauve. And then uh, the lilacs are going to be a dioxian purple and cerulean blue. The tablecloth, this is a, a tablecloth here. Uh, on the table, and it's a mix, um, and the the it's going to be a mix of uh, Viridian Hue, which is by Reeves, and then Sap Green and Phthalo Blue is by M. Graham. All these paints are by M. Graham, unless I let you know. And then for the darker areas, uh, I'm going to add some Payne's Gray, uh, and that's by Reeves, to make that a little darker. And then the leaves are a mix of Viridian, uh, Viridian Hue and Sap Green. So um, I just, I just, I'm so excited about using these colors. I think they're really beautiful. Okay, so let's get started on our painting. Well, for some reason, the video wasn't on. I thought I had put it on, um, so sorry about that. I just want to let you know that I used my number eight, uh, actually it was my number 12 round. And um, what I did was I put my background in first and uh, what I did was I put the ultramarine blue and the Windsor Newton Cotman mauve together. Uh, and I wanted uh, like a, a muddled background. So I went around like that with my brush and then in between the leaves and by the vase. And then I dried it and I put another uh, glaze on because I wanted it pretty dark uh, uh, right here and under here. And uh, so, uh, sorry you missed all that. That was a lot of fun to paint. Um, and so now I see my videos working now. I guess uh, I'll always have to check next time. And then, so then now on the vase, um, I put the, I wanted the ultramarine blue. And I still use my number 12 uh, brush. Uh, now, I want to tell you too, in the background, first you put water, okay? So you put the water with the brush first and then your paint and then you do another glaze and you, you know you go around like that um, to get that model background. Okay, so we, do, we, we wanted we did that. Now um, for the vase, I used uh, I, the number 12 and I put my water you know again, but I, of course that was dried when I did that so that wouldn't bleed into it into my background. 
And then, then uh, what I used is my number um, two liner brush uh, to put these lines in. And then I looked up in my video and I said, okay, now I'm ready to dry this and I will show you how I'm going to put uh, the lines right here with my liner brush. And I looked up and I saw no video. <laughs> I am so sorry, but anyway, that's where we're at right now, and I'm th I'm really liking the colors. I'm real excited about it. So um, let's just continue with that, okay? All right. I'm using my ultramarine blue, and I'm going to be putting these little lines on here. I th you know I wanted a little. The vase to be a little decorated and this liner brush is really nice to use because it holds a lot of uh, paint and you don't have to go back and forth uh, you know you don't have to put your your paint on your brush a lot because it stays on there pretty long okay so we're gonna be doing that now okay I'm just drying it and make sure that when I start painting, uh, you know, my cloth, uh, the uh, colors won't bleed together with the vase. And I put my water on first. You just saw that. And my colors are the Viridian Hue, Sap Green, and Phalo Blue Mix. And then on the bottom, uh, I add a little Payne's Gray to make that a little darker. And uh, as you see, now on the bottom, a good thing to do when you paint is like, you know, in animals to, you know, the st use the strokes as to how you want the paint or the or how it, the, it should look. You know, like in an animal, the fur goes, you know, one way. Like this cloth, when I paint the bottom of it, I start going down with my brush just because it makes it a little bit of a difference uh, in, the, in the end results. And I wanted to create uh, folds in the cloth and so those areas I made a little darker. And I didn't want a hard edge at uh, the corner of that cloth so uh, you'll see me going in making that line um, a little wider than uh, the narrower because I didn't want it to be too hard of an edge and then what I do is I um, dry it and I go back and I put highlights uh, in that area and um, now the top I'm making just a little darker, but it doesn't have that Payne's Gray in there, so it'll, it will be lighter on the top. And quite a bit of that purple didn't actually show up on the video as far as uh, there's an underlining of uh, the purple in the background. That, that I noticed now you can't see too much but but there is you know in the original in my original painting finished painting and there I am making the highlights uh, I'm using my water bottle uh, my spray bottle actually instead of my uh, bottle uh, my uh, containers that I dip my brush in usually because they were so full of the blue and I just didn't get up to change the the water so I just grab my uh, spray bottle to make those highlights. You just go in and you put water on your brush and you wipe your brush every time you make the, um, the highlights. And I wanted to put a little highlight under the vase. Uh, I wanted my light source to be, um, you know, make it look like it came from the left side of the painting. And all painting, you know, a lot of painting, when I do my paintings, I, I put color in, take color out, uh, until, uh, until I think it looks like it has, uh, you know, the highlights that I want. Even in that uh, 
that right there I, I made a nice highlight there I think it made a difference uh, you know right on the corner of that table and now what I do is I start painting my flowers in and uh, I, I want them very light in the very first part of the flower you know the first layer of the flowers and um, so I, I, I make them light by putting my Kleenex uh, and taking that paint out and what I had thought is, you know, I have better put the color in in the background first, actually. Um, so I, I went and did that. And because um, I did, I wanted some, you know, very, very light uh, areas in the background of the flowers, but not that uh, white. Oh, that's a computer. <laughs> So what, what I ended up doing was I made about maybe four layers of these um, flowers. At first I made them very light because there were so many lilacs to get in, in that area, you know. Lilacs are just full of uh, these uh, four, four petaled flowers that are just so pretty. And... Um, I had a lot of fun uh, making that and I don't show you the you know the whole time that I'm making the flowers um, but I just wanted to show you a little bit of it and I go throughout the whole area there like this but I do want to show you something what I did is um, when I put the uh, the paint on what I what I started doing is I started putting that cloth I put that cloth right next to me because I thought if I'm going to do this throughout the whole painting I need that cloth right next to me and that was very convenient uh, to do that now sometimes when I use a cloth like this uh, you know I keep the cloth and I you know I just uh, wash it with uh, with my other towels but in this case uh, th this um, you know the colors that I were using, uh, the dioxin purple, uh, was was quite intense, and I and I just threw that cloth out when I was done. So you know you can either you can you can wash them you know in the laundry with your other towels, or in this case I just threw it out. It was just a cloth I had forever, you know, so I didn't mind throwing it out. Uh, now here I'm going in with another uh, glaze of the same color in the background and um, sometimes I took my Kleenex to make that muddled background too instead of you know um, pushing my brush around which helped um, uh, so you can do that too And in my background, I um, ended up putting uh, a, a, a glaze of just the ultramarine blue uh, later on in, in my painting because, in fact, it might be just, it might be right now that I'm doing this actually, yeah. Because I had already put uh, two glazes, uh, you know, of a combination of ultramarine blue and the mauve. And um, I wanted a, a little bit more contrast uh, in the background um, between my flowers and the background so I just added the ultramarine blue now what you see me doing uh, did you see me uh, using the Kleenex and just kind of soaking that um, that uh, paint up it helps because um, sometimes if you don't do that it will get under your tape and um, it will uh, you know get um, further than the border so um, putting that Kleenex in and soaking that up when there's quite a bit of paint on the end there really helps and you see like right there you know on, the, on that right side is where I wanted it the darkest because um, you know like I said my light source I wanted to have on the right and now I'm starting to paint the leaves and any any kind of purple uh, that got around the leaf area I just took it out with my brush and it looks like I'm using my number four round because um, it's a smaller area 
I just remember the uh, the smell of the you know when we took our walks the lilacs were just wonderful to smell I <laughs> uh, I told my kids uh, about the lilacs uh, smelling the lilacs and uh, I, I sent them a text um, of a picture of these uh, you know lilacs and I said uh, maybe someday maybe one of you can uh, invent smell a media or something <laughs> Like that, I think it would be nice, you know, when we uh, paint flowers, uh, that smell, to have that <laughs> fragrance uh, once in a while on our videos. Or how about, you know, when you um, make these cooking uh, videos, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> so, anyway, maybe one day we will. I'm making a little highlight uh, on the right side there, because I wanted a little bit of a difference uh, between uh, you know the vase there and and the uh, the background oh that's just my note as to what I, I wanted to do next it helps me to write down sometimes during my painting uh, what needs to be done next now I'm using my um, let's see it's called a <clears throat> excuse me a uniball signal broad gel pen and um, there's a little white in the middle of those uh, flowers and uh, uh, in some areas I wanted to put that white because the lilacs did have a little white on it uh, on some of them and I thought that really added a nice touch uh, to the flowers any kind of white uh, on a uh, painting that has a lot of color like this really uh, helps the viewers eye to just um, have a little break from um, a lot of the color so it's it's a good thing white is a good thing in a painting like this just gives the uh, viewers eye a little rest and now I'm going around uh, with that uh, ultramarine blue and uh, the uh, mauve color mix around the white there was a, you know a little darker uh, area I'm going I'm using my liner brush for this and in some areas of the uh, petals there there was a little darker area so I'm going in doing that I'm really loving the highlights. Um, I just uh, think this is turning out, you know, how I wanted it to look. And um, making sure there's uh, light against dark, dark against light. Um, And um, making sure the gel pen uh, works and figuring out where I want to sign my name. And I'm really glad I uh, decided to use the gel pen to sign my name uh, against the dark cloth there. And um, drying my tape so that uh, it's ready to be taken off. And I see I just got a little bit of a, a the paint right there that came through taking that off with exacto knife please give me a thumbs up if you like this video and share it with a friend happy creating